Hi, it's me again. Now we've been looking at the air and we've been seeing it's made of particles and we've been seeing all these other things going on with air and we've talked about the idea of pressure but we really haven't gone too much into it. So let's have a look at pressure and its effects today. Now obviously atoms, we've already said they have mass. So if I put something on your head that's got mass, you feel it, right? But sometimes there's something on our head all of the time, and that's the weight of one atmosphere, one thickness. And we can see over here on the right that all this right up the top of the atmosphere is all pressing down because the weight of it is the effect of gravity on all these atoms or particles in here and it's pulling it down towards it. So even though it doesn't appear to be doing anything, and we really can't notice the difference, on top of our head as we're walking around is one thickness or one complete atmosphere of particles pushing down on us or being affected by gravity and being pulled down on us. Interesting, isn't it? And this is why we normally talk about at sea level, and that's about as low as point we can get, that we have one full atmosphere or one atmosphere pressure on us. Sometimes you might see it as written fully as atmosphere pressure. Other times it might be written as ATM, one ATM, or with our new metric system, the measure of pressure is a pascal, this K in front means kilopascals or a thousand pascals. And then we find that the air pressure on us, if we're standing next to the ocean, is about 100 kilopascals of pressure. But we don't really feel it, do we? I mean, it's not something we think about very often and it's not something we feel, but it is there. So, the next question is, does it change? And obviously the answer to that is yes. And I've got a lovely picture, or two pictures, of mountains. And I chose this one basically because I had two mountains next to each other. Now, what I've shown here with the red arrows is they are pressure. And as you can see, the arrows get smaller as I climb the mountain. If I'm down on the plain next to the mountain, apologies for the bad picture, if I'm down on the plane next to it, we have big arrows. When we start climbing the mountain, the arrows get smaller. So this would tell us our air pressure is being smaller. And if I climb right to the peak of this mountain, the arrow is smaller still, which implies that the air pressure is even smaller. So this says that air pressure will drop as I get higher altitude, in other words, higher away from the lowest point of the Earth, so the sea level, if you like, from sea level. So what does it mean? Well, I thought this picture described it pretty well. If I'm down here on the ground, all of these particles are pushing down on me, right? If I was able to move up to here in a balloon or a plane or whatever, up to this level, only this amount of particles are pushing on me. This is not pushing on me anymore, it's below me. So only this is pushing, so I'm going to have less particles pushing down on me, so the pressure pushing on me will be less. And that, in essence, is what we're talking about. Scientists have actually studied this pretty well, and if we look over on the right-hand side of this picture, we see we've got millibars, and that's a pressure measurement. We say we start off with 1,000 millibars and gradually decrease at 10 miles up, which is an old-fashioned measurement, around about 16 kilometres up in the air, we have 100, so it's one-tenth. All right? And then it goes up and up and up, or rather, get down and down and down. And right at the top here at 60 miles, or around about getting close to 100 kilometers up in the air, there's not much air pressure at all. 0 0.001 millibars, gone from 1,000, 
So it's almost one million times smaller. Goodness gracious me, that's tiny. And this is why when we're flying, right, we fly up in this area here in the troposphere, up the top end of the troposphere we're flying. There's a jet plane there. We're in this jet plane, we're flying. So the air pressure outside is not a hundred, but nowhere near a thousand. You might be a couple of hundred millibars of air pressure. And this is why sometimes when we're looking at the safety displays and the safety things that come on, the movies that come on, on the plane when we get on there to remind us of this, they talk about if the suddenly the oxygen masks appear, we've got to put them on. And that's because the air pressure outside is so small and it would affect us and would suck, effectively take the oxygen out of our bodies. So we might actually die if we don't do this. And that's why if planes do have problems with their air pressure, they have to try to get down to a, a place where the air is a lot more particles of air, in particular a lot more particles of oxygen. So it's very interesting with this whole thing and is rather applicable to our lifestyle. Now, when we first measured pressure, believe it or not, people got there and they had this big tube, like this one over here, that had mercury in it. And what they would do is they would upend it. Notice there's, no op there's an opening here, but it's closed at this end. It's open down the bottom. Right, and put it in a tray of mercury. Now, lo and behold, the only thing that was, most people would think to ourselves, oh, mercury is a really, really heavy liquid. So it would simply drain out of this tube and go into the bowl. But that didn't happen. When scientists measured it, and they actually did this, they actually found that if they did this experiment, this, the top of Mount my meniscus in the mercury, was 76 centimetres above the level of the mercury in the container. Goodness gracious me, that's a lot. 76 cm's, right? Three quarters of one metre was supported by this. Now, the only thing that could have been holding that up was this air pressure pushing down on the mercury here and here. And that stopped this mercury from falling all the way. And this was our first basic barometer. And a barometer, it measures air pressure. And we should know that one. I'm sure you've come across it before. A barometer does that. And as I've said down here, now that's what I call strong. For those who haven't felt mercury, it's like a really, really heavy metal. In other words, it, if I put some in your hand, you would know it's there. In a container, of course, I wouldn't put it straight in your hand. Right, that's a little bit more you didn't know about the air, and now we're finding out. Air pressure is really super important, and we're going to see a bit more how important it is a bit later. Okay, leave that one alone.